You gun girl. Hi guys, it's Jordan. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to be showing you how to paint coolers. I made this one for my littles or little sister in my sorority for her wedding. I just gave it to her today actually at her bridal shower and she loved it. So if you want to see how to do that, you can look at towards the end and see how I completed it. So usually the first thing that I do with the cooler is I take a regular sander and I sand the whole cooler. Um, this time I actually had my friend do it for me because I don't like doing it. <laughs> but they basically take the whole huge sander that's like usually a circle and you go in circles around the cooler. Um, that usually gets the whole thing. And then I take the little sandpaper and I do the little curves and cracks that the cooler does have. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is sand down your cooler. I used this to sand down my cooler. First, you can use like a 60-80 grit. Then you're gonna wanna use the 120 to 180 grit. I really like these foam ones instead of just the regular paper, sandpaper, just cause it's easier to hold. It's easier to get into the little crevices of the cooler. So that's why I use these instead of regular sandpaper. So another thing that you're going to want to do if there's any indents in your cooler, like the logo saying Igloo, um, this is just for your preference. I know I like my coolers to be smooth and I don't like seeing any of the logos. So I take spackle and I spackle that in um, and I use this spatula to do so. Um, this time I only had to spackle my cooler once. If you do that, just make sure that you have enough time in between just so you can make sure that it is dry before you start painting your cooler. Um, that is a good thing to keep in mind. After you put on the spackle, you're going to put on a nice thick layer of spackle. Then you're going to let it dry for 24 hours. Then you're going to want to sand it down with any of the extra sandpaper that you have just so it's a smooth surface. All right, after you're done sanding, you're gonna wanna prime your cooler. Um, I usually use something that's good for the base of my cooler. So this cooler, I'm painting a light blue. So I primed it with this. So it's just a white, it's primer, dash paint, and it's gonna be a good for my base. And you're basically just gonna wanna do it around the whole entire cooler. So uh, here I have it around the whole thing. And I have the lid over here. You're gonna wanna detach the lid from the top. I also detached the handle right there just because it's easier to get around everything. I usually do that first when I first start out. I usually like to do two coats of the primer and then I'll begin painting. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'll see you in a little bit when I start painting. So my first step for painting was to put the painter's tape along the top part of the cooler where it's white, just so when I'm painting I don't get any paint on it as I go. I'm going to put down the base color of the cooler. This cooler is pretty simple because I'm just doing the same color all the way around. If you are doing a different color on the different sides of the cooler, I would suggest putting tape on the corners and doing two opposite sides at a time and then doing the other opposite sides. So sometimes I freehand, but other times I trace fonts from defont.com. I usually go in the handwriting section, I choose the font that I would like my words in. Then I screenshot it and I place them into a Word document. Then I resize them to how I like. Then I put my tissue paper on my computer. I tape it around to keep it in place. Then I trace the font. You can also print it off and trace it on paper as well. Now I am tracing it on the cooler with a Sharpie. You need to make sure that the color that you are using will show up on the cooler after you trace it. Quick 
Oke. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. So this is what it looks like when you trace it onto the cooler. Now I'm using a black paint pen from Walmart just to fill it all in. I decided to do the words before I put the glitter background down just because it's harder to paint over top of glitter. All right, so I'm basically almost done with the cooler. So this is the back side. I just need to do a little bit of more painting on there. I just wanted to talk about the different paints that I use on the cooler. I use acrylic paint. That is the best paint to paint on coolers with. It really doesn't matter what type of finish it is. So this one I use usually, it is usually like a dollar something at Walmart. So not that expensive. This one is this brand, if it zooms in. There we go, that one. It's a gloss finish. It could be gloss or matte. It doesn't really matter what type of finish it is because at the end, we will be using Mod Podge either in a matte or a gloss finish just to finish it all over. So it doesn't really matter what type of finish that you have your acrylic paints in. That finish will cover it up. Alright guys, so we're on to the last step of our cooler painting. So our last step would be to put on Mod Podge. So Mod Podge is here. That's what it looks like. You can get it in many different types of finishes. This one is like glossy finish. There's also a matte finish. But I feel that the glossy finish on coolers gives it that glossy finish that a cooler most likely should have and compared to matte. So I go ahead and I do the glossy finish just because it gives it a nice glossy finish. I've used matte before on a cooler and it didn't look as nice so I ended up putting the glossy over it anyway. So I would recommend glossy if you can. Um, also with doing a Mod Podge, I would recommend if you buy a new brush, I would recommend washing the brush. I mean I, I recommend washing the brush before you use it at any time, but definitely for Mod Podging at the end, I would really recommend washing the brush before you do it. Just so you know, none of the little hairs from the paintbrush are going to get onto the cooler. Um, that's really annoying. I know I have one right here from when I was beginning. So pro tip, take, take it from my mistakes. So like I said in the middle of this video, you do not want to cover up any of this glitter with normal Mod Podge. Um, normal Mod Podge, as I said before, will make this dull looking. I've done that before. Don't do it. It doesn't look pretty. So keep it like this. This is already sealed from us mixing it with the glitter Mod Podge, so it's good to go. So what I did is I kept my stencil from my Wisconsin and I'm gonna put it over it with painters tape on the back so hopefully this will help me not get Mod Podge on it. Another thing to keep in mind Mod Podge can also glue paper down to surfaces. Okay, so this is the top of the cooler. You can see I've done a lot of it already. Um, I just wanted to show you guys how I did the glitter on the top. So for when you want to do anything that's glitter, you need to get glitter Mod Podge. So this is what it looks like. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. I really haven't seen it anywhere else. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take the glitter glue and you want to put some of it into a bowl. a lot. Probably did not need that much, but it's okay. Most likely a bowl that you would like to get rid of is the best idea. So there's that. You can see I've used this for other times doing this cooler because you will most likely throw away this bowl at the end. 
Then you want to add it with any glitter. This is the one I chose. I just got this from Walmart. It's a finer milled glitter, as you can see. And then you're just going to want to add that. Um, I add until I'm happy with the mixture. I add a lot of glitter to mine because um, I want it to be like opaque with glitter. I don't want any white showing through from the cooler top. So I'm making it as glittery as possible. Um, this is my second coat I'll be doing of the glitter. So you can see it right now. It's not that much glitter in the glue right now, so I'm going to add more. Okay, so this is the consistency of the glitter that I like. That light stuff, that's like what it looks like when it's wet. So I'm going to just go over that now and make it more opaque. Alright guys, that's the end of the video, so check back next time if you have any other DIYs or any other sorority fraternity crafts that you would like me to do. I'm always up for suggestions, so just let me know in the comments below. Thanks. <laughs> you want to say bye? You say bye? Say bye.